Welcome to the outreach ministry of Bishop Victor Gill, Prophet of the Nation. Coming to you from the Caribbean paradise, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Join us right now for an experience that can change your life. Get ready for your miracle. Here is Bishop Victor Gill. Please turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 1 through verse 13. It reads, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, Do you see all the, these things? Assuredly I say to you, not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Nor as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am Christ. And will deceive many. Today I want to speak to you on the subject. The future of mankind. What is the future of mankind? What is the future of this world? There are many who are looking forward for a bright future. And there is somehow, in most people, a subconscious notion that somehow the world is going to solve its problems. The movers and the shakers, the power brokers, the people who are so-called in charge, will take us to that destiny that we subconsciously imagine. Ever since the Tower of Babel spoken of in Genesis 11, there is this notion that the power brokers, the decision makers at the top are taking us somewhere. Even now through the UN, you hear of ending poverty. Establishing human rights, ending wars, diseases, saving the endangered species of animals, saving the planet from eco-disaster, from natural disasters, from global warming. We are about going green, improving technology. The secular world gives the impression that this world is getting closer and closer to solving humanity's problems. They give the impression that there is light at the end of the tunnel. All mankind needs is to probably go a little deeper into space and discover or be lucky enough to discover something that can give us the answer. Just a little more scientific breakthroughs and we will get there. Just a few more tests in the lab. Just a little more political will. Just a little more political cooperation. Just a little more adjustment to the global economy. Just a few more bugs to fix. A few more downloads, a few more uploads, a few more resets, or a few more clicks, and we will get there. We will get there, and we will all 
ride out into the sunset and live happily ever after. Whether you say amen or not, the truth is in the minds of most of us, there is that notion. And it sounds good. It sounds enticing. And I will love it to be so. But the truth is, may I tell you, that that is the farthest thing from the truth. The notion that the world's problems are going to be solved by man is one of the biggest lies of the ages through which Satan has led multitudes to hell and continues to lead multitudes to hell. And that view, that, 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 that notion is a secular worldview. The sad thing about it is that even today, as has always been through the ages, the church usually accommodates itself to the status quo. And so today, the church is accommodating itself to the notion and trying to uh, massage the Bible to fit that notion that somehow we're going to solve our problem. And so they call it the prophetic reformation. We're going to take over the world. And we twist evangelizing the world and bringing them to Christ to evangelizing the nations and saving the nations as it were, the culture. Saving the culture. My first point to you today is what the future of the world would be like according to Jesus. And according to our text, I want you to know that Jesus did not leave us to guess what the future of the world would be like. It is very important to note that Jesus never gave the slightest indication that the world will gradually solve its problem and evolve into a glorious future. As a matter of fact, in Matthew or text 24, Matthew 24, Jesus made it clear to all the things that we can expect in the future. And so he said, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nations will be against nations and kingdom against kingdoms. And that word nation against nation means the word in the Greek for nation is ethnos and it means there will be races against races. In other words, racial division. Kingdoms will be against kingdoms. He said there will be famines. There will be pestilences. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be increase in sorrow, not decrease. Christians will be hated, persecuted, and even killed. The church will never be loved by this world, according to Jesus. Jesus also said many will be offended and will betray one another. Many will hate one another. He said there will be increase in false prophets and they will deceive many. He said iniquity or lawlessness will abound. He said the love of many will grow cold. And he said the days will become more and more like the days of Noah. And the days of Lot. And he gave these things that we can expect right up to his second coming. And he put it in such a way that as, as the world grows closer to that point, things will get worse. If we take it up to the first half of the tribulation period the first three and a half years are counted in Revelation 6 through verse 8 when the seven seals are open 
The Bible says the first one, a white horse comes out with a bow conquering and to conquer. After that, a red ho horse comes out to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. Then a third horse comes out, a black horse. And the Bible said the rider had a pair of balances in his hands and a voice cried, a measure of barley and a measure of wheat for a penny and see that you hurt not the oil and the wine and this speaks of famine. The Bible says when the fourth seal was open, a pale horse came out and the name of him who sat on it was death and hell followed and he was given a great sword and that they should, it should one quarter of the earth should be killed when the fifth seal is open the Bible says that I saw the souls that were beheaded for the word of God under the altar the testimony those who hold fast to the word of God when the sixth seal was open, the Bible said there was a great earthquake. And every island was moved out of its place. And every mountain was moved. Could you imagine an earthquake so great that Trinidad and Tobago bounce together? The Bible said every island will be moved. And that is just the first half of the, of the tribulation. When the seventh seal is open, an angel is getting ready to song seven trumpets to start the whole process again. And at the end of that seven trumpets, seven vials are getting ready to be poured out. And one of those vials, when they are poured out, that earthquake takes place that causes every island to disappear. So if you miss the rapture, don't stay here. It's going to sink. And every mountain will be flattened. The Himalayas, Mount Everest, and K K4. All those huge mountains that men want to climb to build so good, they will become a plane. There will be no northern range here because there will be no Trinidad. And every island, the Bible says, you read it in your Bible. But even the church today is jumping on the bandwagon of a bright future called the Apostolic Reformation that we are going to take over the world. And hear what they hear how the devil deceives them. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Go, Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So they take that word teach, which means disciple in the Greek. And they said, Jesus is saying, not, not just disciple people and bring them to me, but disciple the nations and convert the nations. You see, my friend, there was a time when, and I have to explain this as we go along. There was a time when Jesus told his disciples, don't go to the Samaritans, don't go to anybody else. Just go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So they were to evangelize and reach out, first of all, to the Jews, beginning with the Jews. But when the Jews rejected the gospel, Jesus said, now go into all the world and convert men but not necessarily the world you cannot con convert this world Satan is the god of this world God is not the author of confusion God said love not the world the world is a system operating under the power of Satan for the church to buy into that is to come under the power of Satan are you there with me we've got to rightly divide the word of truth the Bible says in James 4 and verse 4 you adulterers and adulteresses, know you know that friendship with the world 
is enmity with God. Listen to me. The Bible said concerning this world, when they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. When they were building the Tower of Babel, it looked like a good idea, but it was rebellion. When man tries to solve his problem without God, it is a rebellion against God. It is a secular worldview. It is a deception. Do I have a church out there? So, Jesus tells us clearly what the future of the world would be. And, what, and there's a saying, today is the tomorrow you thought about yesterday. So when we talk about the future, we have to also understand that we are that future. We are in the future. I know there is more to come, but brother, we are way up there. Because it's 2,000 years after since he gave those words. So Jesus told us what the future will be like. That's my first point. Secondly, the gospel is good news propagated through the church. The gospel is good news. As Christians, we are bearers of good news. After the resurrection of the Lord, he commissioned the disciples and by extension, all his disciples, all his followers throughout the ages to share the good news with humanity. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The word gospel means good news. It comes from the Greek word euangelion. It's a compound of two words. And the word you is from which you get the word good. Like in eulogy. When you eulogize somebody, you speak well of them. That word you means good. And so the gospel is good news. The euangelion. Angelion or angelos means message or messenger. So we carry a uh, the euangelion, the gospel, the good news. But you might ask, what is the good news if this is what the future will be like? Anybody out there? Many today are confused about what the good news really is. Many have the notion that the claim of Christianity is to solve the world's problem and gradually make the place another garden of Eden. That is not a Christian concept. That is a secular worldview concept. The gospel, Jesus said, is going to be chaotic. Things are going to get bad. But the gospel is hope in a time of chaos. The gospel is hope to a world in crisis. The gospel offers life in the midst of death. The gospel offers peace in the midst of the storm. The gospel is not about saving the world. The gospel is about saving the soul. It's about saving the souls of men. The gospel, the good news is a promise not to make this world new, but to make men new creatures in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Any man in Christ is a new creature or a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Anybody out there? The gospel is a promise to make all who call upon Jesus a new creation to give them a new birth. A God, the gospel is the good news to change men's heart from sinners to saints. The gospel is, is the good news to break the power of the devil off of people and convert them to give them a new beginning to give them a new heart.
that's the gospel the gospel is not that there would not be a storm but the gospel is that in the midst of the storm there is peace there is safety the gospel it's not that the rain is not going to fall as it was in the days of Noah. But the gospel is, there is an ark for all who want to be saved. Are you hearing me? That's the gospel. The gospel is a rescue mission. The gospel says, hey, the world is in trouble. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. But there is hope for you. God loves you. And you have to understand something that what is happening according to what Jesus says, uh, the impact will not just be physiological. It will not just be physical, but it will be spiritual. Many people will be deceived. False prophets will arise and deceive many. Many people will be running helter-skelter, hither, to and yon, confused. But the gospel is that uh, there is one who keeps Israel and he can keep you. There is one who neither sleeps nor slumber. There is one who says as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so I will surround you. And he says, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And I will never give you more than you can carry. Amen. Things are going to get worse. People are going to say they are now transing. People are going to say, no, I'm, a, I'm no longer a man, I'm a woman. I'm no longer a woman, I'm a man. Things are going to begin begin to get gory and eerie. Uh, there are going to be wars. Right now there are 14 nations uh, fighting each other, but CNN won't tell you that. BBC won't tell you that. Amen. The gospel is that God uh, is still in charge. Are you hearing me, somebody? Learn the parable of the fig tree. The fig tree, usually in the, in the Bible, usually refers to the nation of Israel. He said when the branches has already become tender, and put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. Or surely I say unto you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, my words will by no means pass away. Jesus, according to theologians and Bible scholars, is saying, that the generation that sees the rebirth of Israel as the fig tree, when you see it begins to put forth the leaves, the young shoots. And the generation, look in verse 33, when all these things begin to come together, that's, that's another key. He said, when you see all these prophecies, wars, famines, the days like Noah, and the days, you know, genetic engineering, to bring in a sort of a mongrel race like the days of Noah when you see the times like Lot Sodom and Gomorrah he said when you see that he said no that the time is near even at the door verily watch this verily I say unto you the generation that sees these things will in no wise pass away until all are fulfilled And to put the signature below it, hear what he says heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Number three, why should we take Jesus' warning of the future serious? Touch the person next to you and say, Stay awake. <laughs> Obviously. We need to do that because Jesus said it. And he is the chief prophet. But there is another very important reason. Look at the, the text again. Verses 1 and 2. It says, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him to show him all the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, Jesus spoke those words. He said, and the disciples were shocked. They, they were showing him the beauty of the temple. Look at this temple, Jesus. Look at the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said, you see this? Everything is going to mash up. 
There will be not one stone, not one single stone. It will be so terrible. Not one stone will be left upon another that will not be thrown down. And Jesus spoke these words around AD 32, just before he died. By 70 AD, one generation after, what Jesus said came to pass. Now, what is interesting is this. When Jesus spoke about the temple, he did not speak about the temple alone. He spoke about every other thing we read in the text right up to his coming. So the point is this. If Jesus spoke one line of prophecy and the first one already came to pass, then no, beyond a shadow of doubt, everything else is coming to pass. Are you there with me? And, and he did that on purpose. But not only that. Not only through the destruction of the temple, Jesus was saying, take everything else that I told you very seriously because they will surely come to pass. Take the word very seriously because just like the temple, they will come to pass. The destruction of the temple validates everything else will come to pass exactly as I have said. The temple was so great, so important, so central, so beautiful that its destruction seemed inconceivable. Yet, it came down. But listen, I want you to see something further. There's another point that Jesus is making. If God's own house, Lord have mercy, oh Jesus, if God's own house, hmm, would be destroyed to the point that not even one stone would be left upon another, Hmm. And if God's own house will be destroyed first, what is the message? What is there in the world that I will not destroy? And since it has already been destroyed, you will be a fool not to prepare for what is coming. I'm closing. First Peter chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Hear what Peter says. But the end of all things is at hand. That is the same thing Jesus said. And watch unto prayer. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're calling upon God. Make sure you're spending time with God. We appreciate the time you spent with us today. If you need prayer right now, send us an email to info at victorgill.org or call now at 1-868-266-1830 and we will pray for you to get your miracle. You can partner with Bishop Gill to bring healing to the nations by donating any amount at www.victorgill.org. Thank you. From our family to you, God bless you richly.